Cheers. My name is Pedro Leão, and I'm a male artist. There was a time when power and knowledge and providing for one's family were ideas specifically associated with men. But in the mid-20th century, women began venturing into these and other traditionally male activities and behaviors. Feminism was a movement of self-analysis. In their quest for equal rights, women learned a lot about themselves and what it is to be a woman. During the Second World War, with most men fighting in the trenches, women back home were discovering that they could do everything a man could, sometimes even better. We're half a century later, and women are managing businesses as CEOs and even running countries as presidents and chancellors such as Christina Kirchner in Argentina and Angela Merkel in Germany. It's a great time for women. But what about men? In the past 50 years, we witnessed a social and political change made the old paragons of manhood become obsolete and ridiculous. Feminism preached equal rights to women, and the idea of man as the political gender with exclusive rights ceased to exist. The pointlessness of the last wars fought by the USA turned the archetype of the soldier, the fighting man, into a stupid brute. And when men turned to their fathers for guidance and wisdom, they found industrialization had them working in the factories and offices all day long. They were absent fathers who taught them nothing about manhood. Gradually, they became the Homer Simpsons of the world. Oh! Surrounded by more capable women while they were constantly made the butt of the joke. Warren Farrell once wrote that in the past quarter century, we exposed biases against other races and called it racism. And we exposed biases against women and called it sexism. Biases against men we call humor. As women raised their own awareness of the issues regarding the female gender and started standing up for themselves, the younger generation of men took it for granted that they would one day rule the world. They sunk back into apathy, only to wake up to a complete role reversal. And you know what? In my opinion, they deserved it. And I don't mean it as revenge for the years men spent bullying women, but because of their complacency. Of course, not all men just sat back and ignored the red flags going up. In the United States, some men began discussing male issues as early on as the 1970s with Warren Farrell's book, The Liberated Man, where he discussed the dynamics in families with working mothers and caregiving fathers. Robert Johnson wrote he, Understanding Male Psychology in 1989, where he explored male psychology based on the myth of Parsifal and the quest for the Holy Grail. But it wasn't until the 90s that the discussion really caught on. Robert Bly wrote Iron John, a book about men in the 1990s. His work is considered what, as what started the mythopoetic men's movement in the US. In Iron John, Bly explores the absence of the mentor or father figure in male upbringing, starting in the industrial age. As more and more books began to sprout about the subject, the term masculism surfaced to define the work of these authors. By the turn of the century, it encompassed literary, philosophical, sociological, and legal areas. But alas, it also started gathering critiques. The most notable of these came from feminist groups considering masculism to be a sort of backlash against feminism, an attempt to reverse the victories of the feminist movement. They usually targeted what became known as patriarchal masculism, a subdivision of the masculist movement that indeed sought to emphasize and defend traditional male gender roles. But the core principle of the masculist movement has never been to reverse the women's movement, but to accelerate it and extend its principles of self-awareness to the male gender as well. Warren Farrell, who wrote The Liberated Man in 1974, was initially a supporter of the feminist movement himself, and even today is still active on both fronts. Progressive masculism, as the main subdivision of the movement is called, struggles for gender egalitarianism, a way for both genders to coexist in a respectful relationship. Here in Brazil, Although the movement itself is still widely unknown, there have been the first few personalities to address the issues of manhood. 
Yvonne Martins writes articles for local Apoca magazine, often commenting on gender issues from the male perspective. Last year, renowned psychoanalyst Contardo Caligares, who writes a weekly column for local newspaper Folha de São Paulo, had his monologue, O Homem da Taja Preta, The Censor Strip Man, uh, enacted for five months. In the monologue, as well as in his weekly column, Caligaris goes straight to the point in confronting the confusion of what it means to be a man today, the pressures, contradictions, the obligations. On the internet, the site Papa Gioni, Man Talk, was launched in 2006, a sort of lifestyle magazine for the modern man. Although some of its collaborators tend to adopt points of view of patriarchal masculinism, most of the site discusses relevant issues and tips for contemporary men. It is noticeable that here in Brazil, the gender discussion still revolves largely around sexual orientation and practices, and around men's relation to women. Caligaris' monologue, for example, spends minutes debating why there seems to be such a wide array of labels for male sexuality. You have the straight, bisexual, transvestite, drag queen, uh, transsexual, passive or active homosexual, metrosexual, ubersexual, while women seem to be plainly straight, bisexual or lesbian. Anyway, matters of manhood itself, like male upbringing and legal issues, are still less frequently the target of media attention. I took part in the selection process for the Chelsea and May Fine Arts Program in 2009. My research project stemmed from my personal experiences of displacement and inadequacy as a man after the advent of 20th century feminism, being raised by women babysitters, taught by women teachers, hired by women employers. Meanwhile, adult men were mysterious beings who vanished early in the morning and spent the day doing God knows what at the office, insufficient role models for a young man. What was the project? Simply put, I proposed coming to London to study the origins of the feminist movement first, and how it was translated into art over the years by Europeans like Niki de saint Paul and her shooting paintings, for example. After that, I'll wish to establish guidelines for masculist art and end my MA project with an exhibit, both of my own work and that of other University of the Arts students who fit the guidelines. My project was highly recommended by my interviewer at the time. However, the tuition fees were more than I could pay, and after being accepted into Chelsea, I applied for one of 16 scholarship grants created that year. However, my application wasn't successful, and I believe that was largely due to the fact that I had a very good idea, but almost no previous production to back me up on it. After all, I had only just begun thinking and reading about the subject. So I deferred for a year to do some initial research and produce what I thought could be the first masculist works of art. I am currently finishing a painting based on Robert Anderson's play Tea and Sympathy, where a young and fragile man's masculinity is scrutinized by his peers. It's part of an art project that has lasted for five months now, a homage to my grandparents who were amidst the first professional actors in Brazil. These paintings will be part of a small solo exhibit in August, just before I leave for London. Please feel free to take a look at my flash presentation if you haven't done so already. It contains some of the work I've been doing in the past year, as well as my personal take on the issues I believe should be addressed by Masculist Art. The time for this project is now. The issues are gaining the media, and I don't know of any other institution that has a specific project to deal with them in the area of fine arts. We can make Chelsea the first of its kind. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm looking forward to meeting you all very soon. Para, 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 para.